Hola. I'm going to try something un poquito diferente hoy. I'm going to try um, really using uh, my gift of knowing two languages. So, uh, en octubre 2019, perdí a mi santa madre y hoy represento a mi mamacita. So, from October 2019 to October 2020, I had multiple losses besides my mom passing away. I also lost my marriage of 22 years. How did I cope? <laughs> well, I overwork. That's what I do. I work just so that I don't have to feel. Because if you feel and you have to grieve, that pain in your soul comes out. So <laughs> I decided that I would overwork. So I joined um, the school board. <laughs> Just a little extra to do. <laughs> um, not only just any school board, but you know, the school board. Uh, I also uh, participated in other projects, other committees. Um, I'm a mom of three kids, and I'm like, okay, fill up every minute of my time. Why? Avoidance. I wanted to avoid the pain. It took me a while to realize that, too, because I'm like, no, I, I love what I do. I love helping people. I love connecting people to resources. I, you know, I enjoy my job. I really do like it. Forward to a year after my mom passed away, I started feeling different. And I couldn't put my finger on it. I'm like, why am I feeling different? What is going on? ¿Qué te pasa? ¿Estás loca? No, no creo. So I was having these little conversations with myself. As long as I don't answer myself and start, you know, having a conversation like totally with myself, I should be okay. So I was like just doing a little self-reflection there. And I'm like, no. Algo pasa. And I'm like, ¿y, y qué? ¿Qué es diferente? In the past, how did I do it? See, when I was six, I lost my baby sister, who was three. 20 years later, I lost my eldest sister. 10 years after that, I lost my dad. And recently, my mom, and I was like, why? What's going on with me? Why do I feel different now than back then? And just so you know, I am proud to be in my 50s. I tell people I'm in the fabulous 51 right now. And so <laughs> in the past, I'm like, okay, how did I do it for 50 years? What was going on? that was different. So the more I analyzed it, the more I realized that um, I needed help. <laughs> so I sought help in the, you know, med medical American way of doing, um, seeking that help. And when I called to get help, I was told, we don't have appointments for another seven weeks. I'm like, oh, okay, seven weeks, sure. <laughs> They're like, but you can join a grief counseling group. How's that? Okay, yeah, sure. So I joined it, and <laughs> I found myself really anxious because I felt the need that I wanted to help everybody that was there. I'm like, oh my God, I could help that person. I could help that person. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Marina, this is for you. You need the self-care. So I did. I'm like, okay, why am I not feeling better? What is going on? A little bit more of self-analysis. And then I had someone ask me a very important question. She's like, so why do you cry? Because see, one of those things that was different for me is that um, I started feeling grief oozing out of my pores. I was like, just out of the blue, like I could be here talking and all of a sudden I just, you know, lagrimas de cocodrilo, you know, just coming out. Like, what? When she asked me that question, I, I reflected and I'm like, oh, what is she talking about? Well, I cry when I'm mad, I cry when I'm sad. I am a crier. I'm all, if I see you cry, I'm going to cry. She's like, no, why do you cry right now? What is really going on? Took me a while, and then I was like, loneliness. Finally hit me, loneliness. Not alone, because that's different. <laughs> My mom would also say, mejor sola que mal acompañada. So not alone, because I have plenty of family, plenty of people that care. But that loneliness, 
like, why do I feel that loneliness? So I did a little bit of um, following my own advice. Again, another dicho de mi mamá, das el consejo y te quedas sin él, which is true. I do give advice and need to keep some of it for myself. But it's like, okay, so I started to do um, a little bit of uh, what I call, or what is out there if uh, you would like to learn more about it. It's called um, the human-centered design model. So I did a little mini project around that. And that model is really to go to the people, ask them what the issue is, come up with ideas together, implement those ideas, give them guidance and tools, figure it out, because the answer is always there. So the answer was within me, and I kept saying, okay. So I did this little human-centered design model, and um, I started asking people about loneliness. <laughs> and guess what? Everybody I was talking to would tell me from the single mom who really could use somebody to talk to and find out that she wasn't going crazy because her toddler was doing X, Y, Z, to the married mom who was wanting to know what exactly was going on, to, you know, vets, to other people who really just needed a friend, to people who needed more. And so during this analysis, um, I started realizing that, um, yeah, there's more to this. So I went on to um, the website for the World Health Organization, and apparently there's one in every three adults that feel loneliness out there. In a world of eight, almost eight billion people, we have a third of them who are feeling loneliness. And so I started thinking, wow, when I was seeking help, it was done in the traditional way that it's done here. When I was talking to the therapist, okay, it was through Zoom, because, you know, with COVID, but in person, it's a very static way of doing things, and it wasn't very culturally relevant to me. And I kept saying, what is culturally relevant? So I found what I thought was a culturally relevant therapist, because she spoke Spanish, I'm like, yes. Yes, she gets me. But then, was it really culturally relevant? So then I realized, during this whole process, when I started asking people that look like me and speak like me, I'm like, what do you, ¿qué hacemos, gente? ¿Qué hacemos? ¿Qué hacemos? They're like, oh, platicamos. You know, con la abuela, con la tía. We hang out, we eat, we're at the kitchen table, and we talk about whatever we need to talk about. And we have our elders that we go to and say, hey, this is what's going on. And they give us advice, sometimes solicited, sometimes not. Um, and we're like, okay with that. I'm like, oh, that's right. We really seek help differently in a more culturally appropriate way for us. True. Well, I did a little bit more research after that going, huh, I wonder how other countries have done this. Come to find out that, um, a good friend of mine who happens to work in the field of human-centered design model sent me a link to a um, wonderful article about um, these grandmothers in Zimbabwe. And what they do is they have grandma benches. And they have trained over 400 grandmas to actually help people. They sit at these benches and people come and see them and talk with them. And sometimes that's all people need, right? You just need someone to talk to, to get it out, to vent. I was like, wow, the grandma bench. Interesting. What else is happening? I'm like, I really like that concept, by the way, because I'm like, I would love to go and talk to the grandmas, because my mom was one of those grandmas that people came and talked to. She didn't have a PhD. She didn't even have a third grade education, but everybody knew that they could trust my mom. They would come and visit and talk with her. So I'm like, huh. Talk about innovative, and it's not that new of a concept. So as I started looking under the promotora model, which is community navigation, and as the promotoras, I'm going, okay, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could have something to prove that promotora models work when it comes to emotional health and support? Well, there's a study in North Carolina that said that they trained promotoras to do a lot around um, these, helping support these folks around emotional issues, around stress, depression. And what they found was that the folks that attended or talked with the promotoras had a higher success rate on their outcomes 
than those that went through the traditional, static, very academic way of getting help. And I was like, okay, well, right now we have an epidemic in this country created by the pandemic. We don't have enough people to help support other people when it comes to emotional health, mental health, behavioral health, wellness, mental wellness. So wouldn't it be nice if we could train a group of people to become that front line of defense, the triagers? They're going to triage you and say, yes, you need someone to talk to, I'm here. I could be your person. Or, yes, you need specialty care, let me help you navigate that process so that you get what you need. I would have loved to have somebody navigate me. I consider myself an okay navigator, but to do it myself, for myself, that was hard. I'm like, why do we make this so difficult for people? Because if you're already struggling, do you really need a list for you to call another 20, 30 people to find out which ones you're going to go to, which one you're going to be able to see? No. What you need is help, someone to help guide you. So that's when I started realizing that um, what we need is more people. People like my mom, people like the grandmas at the grandma benches. What we need is people like us that have that empathy, that can listen with the intent to understand someone, that can see people. I was missing being seen. Who would see me? My mom would see me. My person would see me. We all need a person. We need our person. We need to be somebody's person. So while powers to be come up with a plan, <laughs> and hopefully um, you know, they'll take some of these learnings and apply them because they're not that difficult. Instead of, I had a friend years ago who would say that um, they would uh, spray money out there, so spray and pray money. You spray it out there and you pray that it makes a difference. Like, well, okay, well, instead of that, can we be intentional and really fund things that we know are going to help people in a way that makes sense to them? So for me, one of the things that I found in all of this is that I was missing my person. My person, like I said, that would see me, that would understand me, that would listen with that empathetic ear without judgment. And that's what most people want. So. I'm like, well, until powers to be figure it out, we can all do that. There's no reason we can't. I'm somebody's person. I finally realized that that's what I am for a lot of people, as I'm sure many of you are too. And if you're not, I recommend that you be somebody else's person. Because just like they say that um, children are one caring adult away from being successful, guess what? So are adults. Adults also need that caring. I wanted to share with you um, my person, but my person is my mom, in case you were wondering. That's who I trusted, and when she passed away, I didn't realize the impact. That's my mom. That she had on me. So, gracias, mamacita, and thank you all.